Hello, and welcome to Adobe APAC Live. Uh, thank you very much for coming along. Sorry about that slight delay. Um, I'm Flynn, and I'm really delighted to be the host this afternoon. I'm here with Martina Martian. How are you going? Hi, I'm good. We um, made it. Yeah, we made it. I feel like I'm presenting in like a newsroom. But right. Yes. We'll give you some papers to shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> here we are. You're really important. Thank you so much for coming along. Thanks for having me. This is going to be really exciting. We're going to we're using completely mobile apps. Mm -hmm. to do illustration. I love this. Yeah. Um, I'm very, very excited. But just before we get stuck in, um, shout out to everyone in the chat room. We've got some familiar faces. We've got some new faces. Hey, Arden, Anton, Tully, Georgina, Chris, Nick, Steve, Chris again, Tully again. What <laughs> is up? Um, thank you for logging in. If you've got questions at all for the next kind of 55 minutes or so that we are live, feel free to ask any time um, and we'll have a chat about it. Yeah, I can't wait. We're here to answer your questions. Um, so if you're wondering what I'm talking about, uh, you can log into the chat by using your Adobe ID. So that's just your Creative Cloud account. Go to the top right hand corner and plug in those details. And you can join the chat uh, with everybody else. Um, and we've got a little bit of an interactive element today, maybe in the, fir like in the first 15 minutes, where we're going to let you guys um, sort of choose something and Martina's going to illustrate it, which is really exciting. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thanks for joining the chat um, and feel free to ask your questions at any stage. But let's get stuck into this. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Martina Martian. I'm a designer and illustrator. Uh, a lot of people know me for my GIFs and my stickers, which have gone viral on Instagram. And I obviously do a whole lot of other stuff. But yeah, mainly I make GIFs and stickers and colorful viral artworks on Instagram. My favorite thing about discovering your work yeah. um, was that I had seen your gifts and potentially used your gifts before right. um, and then sort of saw them in your portfolio. I was like, oh, wow, that's the connection. The connection's <laughs> there. That was actually made by a real person. Yeah, well, that's the thing. A lot of people, they I show them my work and they're like, oh, I have seen this. I just didn't realize like a person made them. Yeah, like, didn't make that yeah, connection. Yeah, there's like an actual artist behind it and mm. that's me. <laughs> that's super cool because you were doing uh, lots of work with Giphy, mm -hmm. Snapchat, Instagram, yeah, all, um, the, all the social yeah, stuff. all of them. I first started making GIFs and stickers for iMessages. Um, right. And then I made them for Snapchat. So I did like the official Australian Snapchat stickers. Mm -hmm. And then I, now I do them regularly for Instagram slash Giphy, the Instagram stories. So yeah, if you swipe up when making a story, tap the GIF button and then just type my name, you can use all my stickers. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty exciting. Um, and how did you get stuck into this? What did you study? You didn't study GIF making at university. No. <laughs> no. Um, I did a Bachelor of Design and a Bachelor of Media. So I only finished studying end of last year. Double degree. Yeah, double okay. degree was a lot. <laughs> Hardcore. Yeah, it was full on. Mm. Um, and yeah, that was I majored in graphic design and textiles and... I kind of just fell into illustration as a hobby and like for fun on the side because yeah. I was like, this is really fun and colorful. This can't be serious design. Mm -hmm. um, and then that ended up being like my full time thing. And yeah, like my side hustle became my main hustle. Your main hustle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you travel quite a lot as well. We'll talk more about this as we go. But yeah, so you, you travel a yeah. fair bit. Like, um, have a very envious feed <laughs> if you <laughs> scroll through. Um, what sends you around the world so much? Um, well, I think that's kind of my why for doing this. Like, I love traveling right. and seeing the world, and that sort of is what motivates me to keep working hard. And mm. um, I definitely shaped my career to be the sort that I could bring wherever I am. Like, I yeah. can illustrate from anywhere. Um, so long as I have Wi-Fi, I can talk to my clients. And mm. I just thought, like... If I can work from anywhere, then I might as well be somewhere beautiful and I might as well just see a bit of the world while I'm at it. Yeah. That's um, awesome. And you bring like a lot of that into your work, which we're going to shoot. We're going to yes, see. Yes, I do. And which is cool. I mean, even the, the artwork behind us. I mean, you're talking about textiles yeah. that you studied. And then I know. I'm starting to make the connection between the wallpaper. Yeah, so this is like a repeat, seamless repeat pattern, which I learned how to make in uni. Probably one of the few skills I actually yeah, <laughs> picked right. up in uni. But yeah, um, background in textiles definitely affects my work. Mm. Uh, yeah, so this year I decided to go on a 100 day adventure by myself. Um, oh my gosh. I just sort of booked really cheap flights to Greece um, and I, the return flight was 100 days later and I was like, that sounds meant to be. <laughs> wow, so just like, just get me over to Europe, however. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, you know, like a few weeks out before getting on that flight, I was very much like, 
I don't think I'll go. <laughs> right. I really didn't think I'd go because I was like, I don't think I have enough money saved. I was very worried about going by myself. I hadn't told my family anything because I was like, uh, I don't want to tell them and then I don't end up going. I don't need to stress them out for nothing. And, right. and then I did end up getting on that plane and I traveled for 100 days by myself. No plan whatsoever. Mm. I just planned to go to Greece and then where are from there? And then, yeah, I ended up going to Greece and like 10 other countries and I traveled for well over 100 days. I didn't get that return flight home. I just kept going. Just so. kept rolling. I love it. It's so good. Um, good. Um, some people are already suggesting some things for you to draw. Okay. We haven't even opened that part up, which is cool. It's okay. good to see you guys yep. keen um, to, uh, to draw a guitarist or someone wants you to draw a Christmas tree as oh, well. Yeah, that's cute. We'll see how we go. We've, um, we've got some stuff planned. We'll get to that part where you get to pick and then we'll see if we've got some time towards the end. Um, yeah, so we've got some people getting into textile design, Annalise. That's, ah, that's pretty cool. That's great. Um, Georgina wants to know your star sign before My star we get started. I am a Leo, which You're is, Leo. I feel obvious. What's up, so I have am I. Are you? Oh, yeah. this is a great, oh, August is the up. Leo show. Here yeah, we are. that's right. I'm surprised we're not talking over the top of each other. Yeah, kind Typical. of are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are a little bit, yeah. Um, so why don't we get stuck into uh, maybe, your, maybe your feed. So we're chatting about this okay. before um, because we're looking at your Instagram feed and your gifts have done the rounds. They, they truly have. Um, yeah, I think this is where most people recognize my work. So a lot of celebrities use my gifts, which is really fun. So you've so, got this cool collection going. Yeah, this is my little, co like my, my celebrity collection. So yeah, Ariana Grande using my gif in the tiniest way possible is my claim to fame. Oh, wow, there it is. <laughs> it's really small, yeah. uh, but I love her. Uh, Lily Allen, the Prince of Dubai. The Prince of Dubai. Yeah, no, no clue why. Kate Bosworth, Ruby, Ruby Rose, Joe Jonas. Just all these people that have used my, yeah, Maroon 5, that was cool. Kendall Jenner is probably the biggest, actually, who's used my work, right. yeah. Is there, any way, is, is there any way for that to link back through to you or is it just once <laughs> it's out? Because it'd be the, cool if they yeah. could click it and find the artist behind it, wouldn't they? It would be cool, but it doesn't seem to work like that. Yeah. Um, I only find out because people send me screenshots. Right, so they're like, like, hey, is that your work? Yeah, yeah, so like, please, if you see my work on someone's story, like, send it to me, because I don't know until I get that screenshot. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, Kendall Jenner. Can you imagine, like, have you ever seen your artwork somewhere weird? Um, yeah, well, it's usually just like like the Prince of Dubai. Like, yeah, that's story pretty pretty random. The story was pretty random. Like, yeah. I didn't even know there was a Prince of Dubai, but there we go. There you go. Thank yeah. You connections. Uh, yeah, so that's just a bunch of, yeah, Queer Eye using it. Reese Witherspoon, I love her. I kind of post the celebrities that I love, but there's other celebrities I just don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know athletes. I don't usually know the male celebrities, but these are all the women that I love. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. That's really great. And maybe we'll just have a quick little look through your feed because you do so much. We're only going to focus on one sort of particular part, so your illustration. Yeah. Um, but, but maybe if you could pick out one or two other pieces of your work so people can get an idea of, because you have like a really wide body of work in like multiple different things. We've got, we've got gifts, we've got illustrations that move, you've got the fine point illustration, mm -hmm. you've got printed work, you've got a store, Absolutely. you've got the repeatable pattern. Like, um, yeah. You do a lot of different stuff. Hundreds. I've just like started doing, yeah, yeah, mainly these like some of my new stickers. So I mainly do stickers and gifts. Mm. Like that's my most popular medium. And I just love making like small, cute things, yeah. especially interactive. Um, I usually do quite a lot of like quite personal uh, quotes. So yeah. people don't realize this, but like when I'm writing things like this, it's like, these are my words. This is for you. This is like literally <laughs> for me. It's from yeah. my own like journal or diary. Um, I'm not just picking out random quotes, like they're my own writing. So yeah, like my work actually is quite personal, just people don't necessarily know it. They mm. just think, oh, it's another, you know, nice quote. But it's like, no, this is my diary you're right. reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I do quite a lot of personal and, like, positive motivational quotes um, mm. coming out of my own experiences. And I just kind of try to brighten up people's feeds and through colour and through messages of positivity. And colour is so important to you, which we're going to get Absolutely. stuck into. I'm um, very yeah, pedantic about my colours. Learn a lot um, sort of putting this episode together and looking through your work. Um, but maybe one more thing I think we should point out is that 2019 calendar. Oh, yes. I thought it was really cool. And also talking about positivity. Yeah. So I have such a nice collection of positive works now. So I decided to make a calendar, which really acts just as like a positive... Um, yeah, positivity calendar, I guess. Yeah. Like, um, just display 12 different artworks throughout the year that are nice positive reminders. And there's also a space for you to write down, like, your goal of the month and 
reflect on what's the highlight because there's always a good part of the month so it's good to think about that. I really like that highlight of the month like you sort of get to the end of the month and you're going to turn it over and it's like actually what did I do that was good it's good to remind yourself that you actually achieved stuff. Yeah Yeah, exactly or even starting a month you can write at the start of the month and just know that there is something to look forward to like someone's birthday or even just a day at the beach like there's always something nice in your month so very cool yeah that's my latest product you can buy if you want (laughs) nice one didn't you you sold out of those originally didn't you uh we did which was wild um and we just restocked them like last night um and they're already almost gone so yeah i couldn't believe it we've never had something sell out so quickly which is really nice there you go very motivating gotta do more products (laughs) it's like putting positive stuff out you get positive stuff back that's That's great that's it um so why don't we get on to some of the work so we're going fully mobile so people who are used to the stream are going to notice that there is no laptop uh, or uh, surface wake or anything over here going straight onto the ipad Yep. Um, so I obviously do use my laptop as well, but yeah. when I'm traveling, especially, I'll use a tablet or an iPad um, because it's just so mobile and there are great apps you can use. So I mainly use Adobe Sketch and Adobe Draw, mm-hmm. um, and I think they're both free to download. So that's also good. Um, and yeah, we'll just get stuck into it, I guess. Very good. So this is kind of where I start out. Um, Adobe Sketch is, I guess, most similar to Photoshop, whereas Adobe Draw is most similar to Illustrator, so it works on vectors. Um, It's a bit different. So I usually use this app just for sketching and planning out my artworks. Mm -hmm. Um, And the first thing I do, which people are kind of surprised about, is I plan out my colors. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm very particular about the colors I use. I always only use, like, maybe five or so colors, um, which you can see up here, the colors that I've sort of decided to stick to. Um, I love working with like a limited color palette and really restricting myself because I don't know, you get more creative and Mm. yeah. Um, Um, Just everyone in the chat room, we're gonna ask some of these questions. We'll get onto the work and then in, no, we'll keep going for the moment. And then in about five minutes when we we have a bit of time, I'll ask some of these questions. So I promise I'll get to you, but we we need to keep going so we can get to some of this design stuff. Yeah, design things. So back to the palette for the moment. So yeah, I usually plan out my colors. So for this artwork, I wanted to do like a a collection of miniature artworks, I guess, in one. Mm. Um, And I wanted them scattered nicely, really balanced across the page. And so for that, I really wanted the colors to also be balanced across the page. So I wanted my, your eyes to sort of connect. Um, So if there was red, there has to be another area of red. If there's pink, there has to be another area of pink. Like you want your eye to jump across the page and not be drawn to one spot. so yeah, I just started planning out where I want the colors to go. So I decided I want like this artwork to be particularly red and this one to be more pink. Uh, and then I start going in and sketching out the details. And, yeah, and so what's this all based on, it says Austria? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> um, well, it's based on basically my time in Austria. Yeah. So I spent, um, I don't know how long, but I was just in Salzburg and Vienna by myself and I just fell in love with mountains and like hiking by myself and being in nature. I hadn't really done that before. I don't think I'd Mm. ever, I don't feel like we have very big mountains in Sydney. We've got bush. We've got bushland. And beaches, which we spoke about before, yeah. We've got the blue mountains, but Austria is just like another level. Right. And it was just so mind blowing. And yeah, I just really wanted to make work about that. So, um, here are so are you sketching of, while you're there? Yeah, I'm usually sketching, but also just taking a lot of photos. Mm. Um, where's my Austria album? Here it is. So I just, I definitely over document when I'm traveling. Mm. <laughs> I take a lot of photos, a lot of videos. I'm just capturing everything because it, whether I know it or not, it could come out in the artwork later. So. Yeah, when I was traveling, I didn't know I was going to end up doing these artworks at the end. I just thought if everything's beautiful, I'm going to capture it all right. and we'll see. Um, but yeah, this is like what inspired me. Um, these mountains and I was completely by myself the whole time. This is me imitating the sound of music. <laughs> so who took the photo? Uh, a tripod. A tripod took the photo? <laughs> yep, I set up my phone in a tree and then just left it. Awesome. That's so great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is just me sitting on a mountain and I just sit there and sketch and 
Yeah, just it's pretty glorious. It was it was really it's beautiful. a sh it's always a shame with um, with landscapes that the photo never does it justice. Does it, it never does. Like it looks amazing, but yeah. I'm sure there it's just all inspiring. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that was my inspiration. Was my time in Austria, and uh, this this is literally where I sat and draw drew the sketches. Um, and yeah, I find that while I'm actually traveling, I can't really produce the final artwork. Mm -hmm. I usually just am gathering inspiration. And then it was only when I like got back home that I could sit with it and process it and finally start coming up with some like final artworks. Because when mm -hmm. you're actually there, you're kind of like almost overstimulated with inspiration. Right. So you can't really sit down and I don't know, I just couldn't really produce much. I could just mm. document and document, but not make something. I like it. It's like you're out on you're out on a mission. You're, like, you're collecting all this stuff. Yeah. You, you come <laughs> home and you're like, what's my haul? What yeah, did I get? Exactly. How, what can I do with all this stuff? Um, that's really great. Well, maybe before we jump back into design, we'll answer some of these questions. Yes. Um, so Annalise asks, how did you get? Um, how did you start getting clients for gifts? Um, that's an interesting one. Oh. Well, actually, it was because I made this iMessage sticker pack. So if anyone used iMessage on iPhones, um, yeah, you can put stickers in your messages. And that was kind of the first, like, GIF messaging, I guess. And I just made a whole pack by myself for fun. Mm. Um, it took ages to figure that out and do all the technology side, but I did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Snapchat noticed, and they really liked it. And then they were like, do you want to do the official Australian stickers for like yeah snapchat so wow and just kind yeah. of kept going kept going from there i think personal projects is the best way to get hired for projects what you like, yeah what you want to do well. like if you mm. want to get hired for gifts then make gifts and mm. show the world that you can do that um mm. don't wait for a client to ask you yeah yeah it's good it's good advice steve s wants to work with you so we need a designer um so i, <laughs> I don't know if you're serious and you know definitely, right, definitely yeah. jump in <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, what else do we have? Um, Ayesha asks, um, how did you get your work out there and noticed by other people, brands, etc.? So I guess, I guess what yeah. you said, putting it out there. Putting it out there, yeah. Mm. Do personal projects, post them on Instagram, post them on Behance, um, show people when you meet them, like tell mm. them you're an illustrator and like really own that label because people will remember and then they'll take notice. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. great. Um, and what tool do you use? And then we'll move on. What tool do you use uh, the most to draw your illustrations and GIFs? Uh, now I use a tablet. So I have an iPad. I also have a Samsung tablet as well, uh, which I'm kind of transitioning to using more because mm -hmm. it's just newer and fancier. The new shiny. <laughs> yeah, new shiny toy. it's my new yeah. shiny toy. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mainly use a tablet. But up until like two months ago, I was completely laptop based. Like right. I never used a tablet before. Yeah. <laughs> but now that's what I use. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll get back to some of those questions, but let's get back into this design. Yep. Um, so, so here we are. So you've got your photos for inspiration. You've kind of, yep. you, do you kind of curate them? Like you seem to have curated them into a set almost before. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so I, these sketches are kind of born out of looking at those photos and yep. really picking elements that I like. So I oversimplify almost. Um, I think it's really easy to get carried away with your details. So I, you know, I pick things that I really like, like I like the shape of those flowers or I like sort of the horizon line of those mountains and mm. I really oversimplify because I just really like my work to look really strong and not basic but, yeah, bold, I guess. It's like yeah. really refined down, isn't it, to... 100%. Yeah. Like yeah. I could get carried away with detail if I wanted to and I can draw in all the detail but mm. I think there, um, it's, there's a lot of challenge in showing restraint and like simplifying as much as possible. Yeah, and you, I mean, you limit yourself with the color palette as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, the colors, I don't draw inspiration from real life. Like I don't go, okay, the sunset was yellow, so I'll do yellow, but, um, and the mountain's obviously green and I didn't do green. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my color schemes, like I developed them quite separately. Um, I have kind of a whole library. These are my color schemes that I develop. Cool. Um, I save them to my Adobe libraries, which not enough people know about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've had some very talented people on the show who I think uh, we've uh, had yeah. quite words to afterwards saying, hey, I think you should be using libraries. They're libraries super are useful, amazing. Especially it's... for colors, like when you're yeah. working um, with illustration, um, but also with brands and stuff. Yeah, with branding mm -hmm. and everything. Like if you have a certain color palette you want to stick to, then mm. save it as a theme in your color themes, and then it syncs across all your devices and all your programs, and it's just there. So yeah, yeah I love my color libraries. That's what <laughs> I do. Um, I guess I could quickly show how I 
put together my colors yeah. themes. Yeah. yeah. So we were chatting about that. So where do all these colors come from? And then um, yeah. we were looking at actually another Adobe app. Yes. Which is convenient. Yes, very convenient. <laughs> I'm just so on brand using all the right apps. Yeah, it's amazing, right? <laughs> um, so I'm really inspired by like 80s and 90s packaging. Um, I love like, I don't know, really kitsch sort of color schemes and right. especially the 80s. Um, I was saying before that I feel like in the 80s they weren't afraid of color and mm-hmm. they weren't afraid of just like overdoing it. So I'm always looking at like old record covers and like, yeah, a lot of graphic design from that era and just loving the colors. Anytime I see any kind of color, I just capture it right. and store it. So you can be like later. walking down the street and kind of double take and go, 100%. oh. hundred <laughs> I do this all, like my boyfriend will tell you, I'm always stopping and taking photos. you going to photos. say your boyfriend's like, oh. Yeah, he's just like, why? Like, sort of like, pink that you like? What exactly. is this? Yeah. Or like I'll see like a sign in the distance and I'll be like, that is the color. Right, <laughs> that is what right. I need. We're going there. That's what yeah, wow. exactly. Um, so, and so, yeah, how do you capture? Um, uh, I use so Adobe Capture, <laughs> funnily enough. <laughs> no, but it's, it's such a fun app. We even got a prop um, ready yeah. for this. Um, so I definitely showed this on my Instagram once and people were just blown away because people just don't know about this app, but it's the best. Um, so what you do is you point your camera. <laughs> how do I do this? Yeah, so okay. I'll do it like that. I'm trying to get it in frame. Okay. okay. You point your camera and then you tap to freeze, and then you can just drag these little dots to pick up the color that you like. And then you can just put together a really nice color scheme. So it all comes up on the left. It's pretty amazing. It's amazing, yeah. And then you can refine it here, so you can brighten it, warm it up, whatever. Um, And then you end up saving it, and you have this whole beautiful library of colors to work with. Boom, just like that. Yeah. Um, and so I do that all the time. Yeah. yeah, it's like part of my routine. I'm always just capturing some colors That's to amazing. use. Uh, yeah, so like, yeah, I think my colors are kind of yeah something I spend a lot of time on. <laughs> like, mm. I really will take my time developing my, my color scheme, and I think that's what makes my work quite consistent. Is yeah, because I'm using these signature colors and and it's so important like you know just again like abstractedly looking at your work and looking at your feed there's such consistency there yeah um and and you know the word that was coming to my mind is a harmony as well mm, so it's mm. like really balanced out like, i think i'm quite like yeah i very much care about harmony like i was trying yeah. to think like too much probably yeah um i think about it a lot and even with my instagram feed i'm not like i don't plan out my instagram feed or anything like that but yeah. I do take into consideration what I posted last. And, right. Um, yeah, like I think a common question I get asked is how do you stay consistent with your work? Mm. Um, but, I mean, if you're being consistent to you and you know what you like and what your taste is, then it's easier. Mm. Yeah. I've got a couple of questions because there's oh, so many questions go. for you. Questions, here we um, go. So um, Dingo was asking, what's the largest file size you've made? Largest file size? <laughs> <laughs> or what's the largest uh, you'd recommend as well? Uh, I wouldn't usually work more than like 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. That's like the right. largest I'd ever work in. But usually I'm working in vectors. So Adobe Draw and Adobe Illustrator are vector programs. Mm. And that means that your illustrations can be scaled at any size really without pixelating. Yeah. And yeah, so you can work at any size and it's fine. And you're safe. Um, and then if yeah. someone wants it on, on a bus stop, and you're good. You're, you're all good. set. Yeah. yeah. So I usually work with yeah vectors just like because that's just easier for yeah. that. Any secrets behind your artworks? That's that's a tough one to answer. Oh. Wow. Well, I guess the, the color the color thing yeah. was kind of a secret. Colors like people didn't at. know I have like a library of colors saved. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna keep going. There's so many. Um, oh, would yeah. you recommend doing a uni course in design to improve one's design skills? Um, not to improve your design skills, but to improve your team working skills and to push you outside your limits and force you to do stuff you don't want to do, right. which is really important. I didn't learn necessarily skills, but I learned like not design skills, but I learned mm. a lot of other skills which uni gave me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. And one last one for the moment. Um, so, any Instagram tips for artists? Yeah. Um, by, by Georgina. Oh, thank you, Georgina, for sending in the questions. Um, For Instagram, I honestly think you should hold back on posting until you feel um, like you've developed your work enough because a lot of young artists, I think, they rush to post their work before they've actually found their style and are confident enough. Uh Um, I'm really glad I didn't post too much of my old stuff. Um, And, yeah, like take the time to develop your work and really work on your style and your craft before you post. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. These, these are great, great questions, guys. Um, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get back into the artwork. I promise we'll try to get to as many as we can. Yeah, please keep them coming. <laughs> keep yeah. Them coming. 
Um, so here we're at. So yes, we're starting we to layer out the layer yes. out the colors, all important colors. Mm-hmm. The colors. Um, um, this this is the part that takes the longest. I think is okay. where I'm planning out my colors. I'm kind of getting a rough idea of what I'm going to draw, but um, yeah, like the next stage would be really ending up with a final artwork. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll quickly show what we're going to end up with, which is this. Um, so clean. So clean, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> balanced. And uh, we're going to put something over here, but yes, what will be here? We'll find out later. Um, <laughs> Tune in next week. Um, <laughs> no, we'll do it right now. Yeah, we will. We will. So yeah, I'll end up with this kind of artwork. And this part where I'm really drawing the final line work is quite quick because mm-hmm. I've spent that time in the beginning planning it all out. Um, and yeah, so this is the stage that takes the longest is planning things out, planning my colors, making sure everything is harmonious. And I always have to try and look at the bigger picture, I think, um, literally, <laughs> instead of getting caught up on the details, like always zooming out, making sure it's balanced overall. And right. Yeah. That's very important to me. So you find if you're like, you kind of zoom in too far and you're just focusing on that one artwork when actually there's, there's more elements involved. Absolutely. That you can sometimes go, oh, actually, I shouldn't have been that close. I doesn't really work anymore and now I've spent all this time doing this detail and I shouldn't have exactly um it's very important to keep zooming out keep looking at the whole picture Mm. otherwise it's just easy to get carried away with detail like yeah it's fun it's fun to go overboard but you have to show restraint (laughs) cool um okay so what next (laughs) um so where have we got three four so um so potentially do some of the sketching okay yeah um so I'll give you a little Overview. So I use just like a traditional graphite pencil just to do my sketching because that just feels more natural. And basically using Adobe Sketch is my replacement for my actual like paper journal um, where I would do this kind of sketching. Like my paper journals and like this artwork are super messy. They're not pretty Um, because it's just planning. It's not meant to be beautiful, perfect artworks. Um, Yeah, so I just sketch using the pencil see what works. This I think will be a little mountain and a little moon. And yeah, like I said before, I very much um, pick and choose certain elements that I want to concentrate on. So I'm not going to do the entire Austrian Alps. I'm going to do, you know, the flowers that I found on one of the mountains. And I'm going to do this particular peak that I really liked. And yeah, and I'm definitely going to do something in this square. So we might, is this where we might ask for some audience participation? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. So maybe we go back to your original images. Mm-hmm. Um, and meanwhile, while um, you guys are voting, we'll, um, we'll answer some of these questions because everyone's really interested in everything that you do. Everything. Um, so as this comes up, those top three photos, is that what we yeah. have to choose from? So please, I would love to hear your opinion. Should I do another mountain? Should I do... The flowers, or should I do like a little lake and mountain? So you guys pick. Uh, maybe we'll give you a minute or two, um, and then we'll just work out um, which has the most votes, mm-hmm. um, and then we'll use that. Yeah, which will be cool. Good. So meanwhile, you can have you can have a little bit of a break before we put you to work, but mm-hmm. you're still gonna have to answer all these questions. <laughs> um, some really great questions, guys. So thank you. Um, keep them coming through. It makes it really interesting, um, and we love to we love, love to questions. hear about like what what you guys are really interested in. Um, so Deb was asking, what uh, pen selection size have you used in this collection? It looks nice and sketchy. Ah, um, the sketch. M- uh, might have I been the, the, first. the one, the first one. Yeah, that was just the graphite pencil, which is on Adobe Sketch. It's just a typical pen. Yeah, graphite pencil. Yeah, just the graphite pencil. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Um, besides Instagram and Facebook, where else would you recommend putting your work from Asia? Um, I would put it on Behance. So that's like the. Um, portfolio kind of artist network that Adobe runs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that Adobe found me through that. So yeah, and it's just like a really great, it's like Instagram, but just for artists and illustrators. So it's yeah. a really great source of um, inspiration. And yeah, there's a lot of brands lurking on there, looking for client, looking for people to hire. So that's definitely true. Definitely put your work <laughs> on there. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. And actually, if you um, have your Creative Cloud ID, you can just log in there and you already have an account yeah. as well. Um, and you can just make it public and start uploading your work. So it's actually super easy to do. Exactly. And that wasn't a plug. Like, that's actually what I use. So yeah. <laughs> just so we know. <laughs> Legit. Um, uh, Sarah asks, how do you export files from the Adobe apps in high quality? I found that when I tr- when uh, I transfer app- 
uh, work to my laptop, they are poor quality when resizing. Oh, interesting. Um, on Adobe Draw, which is vector based, you can literally, um, should I just show? Yeah. yeah. Show and tell. Yeah, show and tell. So in that top right hand corner, you can click um, open in Adobe desktop apps and then you can click Illustrator or Photoshop and it yep. will open the file like in its full size with its layers yep. on those programs. So that's probably the best way to export your artwork. But um, if it's not exporting at the right quality, maybe your canvas wasn't big enough to begin with. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you're saving them as JPEGs. Um, yeah. so JPEGs is a um, lossy format. So every time you save a JPEG, you're going to lose a little bit of quality, mm -hmm. especially when you're going across apps. Um, so if whenever possible, I mean, Vector is going to be one to one, no yeah. matter what scale. Um, particularly if you're opening it from, you know, into Illustrator. Yeah, It'll yeah. just straight up work. Um, but yeah, that could be something. Could be a million other things because, you know, knows? it's kind of trial and error with that sort of stuff. Exactly. I always, when I can, is just open in a desktop app rather than exporting it as an image. I just open the file in the desktop app um, if you're transferring to computer. It looks like um, Lake is the is the winner there. So we've oh, chosen the lake. the lake. But, Ooh, but, the but, lake. but, but, I'm going to oh. ask you one more question. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, do, do, you ha do you have a favorite artwork that you look up to? So maybe an artist? Um, like yeah, I have a few artists that I love. Um, I love this artist called Natalie Dupasquia or something like that. Um, she's an 80s artist and she was part of the Memphis era, which is a really important right. Italian art group. And yeah, she does amazing, like really colorful, really kitsch, like textile designs. So of course I'm inspired oh, wow. by it's her. It's like up your alley. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, so I really love her work. Um, anyone from Memphis era. Right now I'm very into like 60s poster designs and you'll see that influence in my work for sure. Cool. Um, but yeah, not really any current artists or specific artists. I like to look at whole movements yeah. and yeah. Yeah, very cool. Thanks for the questions. We'll get back to some more, but Great we've got, we've got yeah. a lake to draw. We have a lake to draw, and I'm really pleased that people voted for the lake. It's great. Quietly happy with that choice. I'm quietly very happy. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just going to sketch roughly. Let's have a look at that image again, actually. So this is the lake. Anton N has been to the lake before. This lake? You've been to this, this lake? This particular lake? Wow, I think that's what he's saying. That really? is super cool. I think the lake is called... Fuchsia Sea, which is so. If you've literally gone to that lake, that's pretty amazing. That's but if awesome. you've gone to a lake in general, that's great as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I'm noticing a lot is this um, this sort of silhouette of the mountains. I really love that shape, um, and of course, like this lake going around the edge. So I'm going to quickly. Usually, I'd kind of look more closely at the reference image, but for time's sake, I'm going to kind of very loosely base it. Cool. Um, so that's kind of what I saw in that horizon. And then the lake. Let's have a look. I want it kind of going out of the shape a little bit. Um, so you'll see I've already decided that I want this artwork to be predominantly red just for the sake of balance with the whole artwork. Um, but now I'm going to choose some of some other colors as well. I think I would like the lake to be... Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, this is the part where I, I have fun. I just love picking the colors. <laughs> I think pink mountains is always good. Um, and we've got a bit of green over here, so I might put green in the lake as well. And what was that little move you just did then maybe for our Oh, audience? yeah. This is um, – if you hold on the color, mm -hmm. it will turn into so an eyedropper. That's eye the bottom one down there, yeah. Yeah, so um, – So they're holding. Sorry if you can see Oh, yeah, look at that. Color. Camera yep. work, amazing. Yeah, so Go if you team. hold it with the pencil, it becomes an eyedropper. And then you can kind of, yeah, just pick up the color. Just the um, eyedropper we're used to and exactly. everything else. Exactly. Um, cool. Yeah. So I sometimes do that just because it's quicker. I was commenting before when you were going through your work, um, but just before we, oh, we yeah. went live, um, how quickly you, you click and move around. Yeah. It's, it's as fast as some people I know using Photoshop and Illustrator and stuff with their shortcuts and everything. Like. Absolutely. It gets it gets very speedy. Yeah. Um, but I've only been using a tablet for like really not very long. Mm. Um, I resisted switching to a tablet for so long. I was just, yeah, I, I thought I was just desktop through and through. Right. Yeah. 
used a cursor, use a Wacom tablet, but... Because you were using a mouse for a while. Yeah, yeah, saying, I was using yeah. a mouse mostly, and then I was also using like a Wacom tablet, which is not a screen, it's just separate to the it's like laptop. like a peripheral separate to the laptop device? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what I was using, and then mm. literally two months ago, I bought like the cheapest iPad possible, and I was like, I'm just going to get it for fun, because I'm feeling like a little bit creatively stunted and here you yeah. are in a live stream <laughs> here i am like it. everybody get a tablet <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so <That's> yeah <laughs> um i'm trying to think i think i want to do just some slight detail just some slight line work just for like balance sake um but yeah i'm always zooming out again to kind of compare it to the rest of the artwork mm. and i'm pretty happy with that that's going to be my little lake um, so I've got the mountains and I've got flowers, I've got the lake, and that is my impression of Austria. That was my cool. personal experience of Austria. Nice one. So now I'm going to um, save the image. Um, I know I said before I always export it, but in this case I just want this as like a reference image. It's not going to be used in the final thing. Right. So I'm just saving it, um, clicking save image, mm -hmm. and now I'm switching over to Adobe Draw, which is this one. Very cool. So this is the artwork I prepared earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to open that. Um, sorry, I'll do that slower. You're right, I'm very quick. So you click the plus, click image layer. Right. On my iPad. This is just finding the image that you just saved. Just finding the, the image I just saved, yeah. Yep. And I'm going to open it up and just size it roughly. I'm going to pull that underneath and I'm going to put the opacity down a bit just so it's not totally visible. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to move it around. And you'll see that the, the little lake image is faintly shown. I'm just going to try and, yeah, that's fine. OK. So now I'm going to work on the final clean version. And this part's usually really quick because I've already planned out the colors and the shape. Yeah, so, I think it's very interesting that this this the final production part of your work is actually the fastest part. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. um, well, yeah, a lot of people like your work so simple, almost kind of implying anyone could do it. Right. <laughs> and it's because, yeah, the final drawing part is quite quick and it's not technically really difficult, but it's the planning and the thinking and the mm. colours and that's what makes my work, I think, distinct. Yeah, and absolutely. that's where all the thinking is. And Yeah. yeah. So once you get to this bit, you're like, cool. Yeah, let's, let's just it. go. Let's yeah. just draw. Put some Netflix on in the background yeah. or yeah. Spotify. Or <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. music playing. I usually watch, like, trash TV. We are talking honest. about the American Office before. Yeah, yeah. I definitely watched The Office yeah. a lot. I think I'm just going to keep re-watching that show till I die. Yeah, like, I don't. <laughs> I need to stop. I'm with like, you, yeah. <laughs> need to find a new show. Um, so you created a... Rectangle. There. Yes, I've created a little rectangle. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, yeah, I used to think that you had to trace around the shape like that. Um, you do not. You can just um, double tap it and it appears. So mm. just double tap. Just and creates it creates an outline for you. Yep, and it will stamp the outline Love at it. whatever weight and pencil you're using. So um, I'll quickly point out I'm using, I don't know what this brush is. It's it's just like the standard basic round brush. Basic round. Um, and I turn off the pressure dynamics and the velocity dynamics because I like my line to stay consistent in its width no matter how hard I'm pressing. Can you explain what they, they do? That, that's part of the pressure sensitivity. Yeah, right? the pressure sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So if I turn on pressure dynamics, um, you'll see when I'm drawing, it will change width depending on right. how hard I'm pressing. Mm -hmm. um, so I turn that off because I actually want my line to stay consistent. So. I'm pressing hard, I'm pressing lightly, but it doesn't change. Yeah. Because um, I just prefer it. I just prefer it to be really consistent. And that might change, but right now, that's what I like. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think it's just because when I was drawing on Adobe Illustrator for so long, that's kind of the nature of the brush. And yeah. so I got used to that aesthetic. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. yeah, now I'm going to, I'm just going to do like a little practice layer. So I usually just put it at like 61 opacity and I just draw it lightly um, just to practice first and this is just where I'm like testing it making sure it's all gonna look good zooming out again 
yeah, that's fine. I probably didn't even need to do a practice layer, but you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so you're drawing outside the lines. Is that something you learn at Kofa? Uh, yeah, thinking outside the box, yeah. literally. Um, no. Thank you for picking up on that, by the way. I definitely picked that up. <laughs> but so. you are overdoing it. Is that to get a real natural... Yeah, like, because um, I guess, yeah, if I'm drawing outside the lines, then when I come back later, all I have to do is just rub it out and I don't have to worry about messing up that beautiful right. square that I have. Mm. Um, so I'm actually going to do that. I'm just going to draw on a separate layer so that I can go outside the lines without worrying too much because I can just rub it out later. And I'm kind of making it a little bit shaky because I want it to look a bit more organic. Um, okay, and now I'm going to get the eraser and just like rub out those parts that are outside the square. Just because if you've rubbed out part of the square, it just becomes really annoying. Mm. And now I'm going to merge that layer down so it becomes part of the square. And this will make it really easy when I want to color it in. Cool. So to color it in, I'm going to go into my libraries where I have all my beautiful, precious colors. Um, I'm going to stick with, I think this is the color palette I was using. Anyway. And you literally just hold the pen and it fills it. That was quick. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to use the dark pink. So once you have the colour, you literally just press down for what, half a second there or something. Yeah, you just long press. It fills and in well, the whole thing. Wow. <laughs> Preferably the right colour <laughs> would be good. And yeah. So I might um, answer some of these questions now because we did have a couple more come through. Oh, yes. I would love um, to hear them. Meanwhile, I'm uh, just sort of... Zooming out and like perfecting it, but yes, yes. This is a really cool question, Dingo. Um, what uh, What's the best advice you have for my thirteen year old daughter? Um, what What should slash shouldn't she be doing? I'm assuming oh. this is relating to artwork. To, to sh I'm guessing she uh, wants to do art or yeah. um, draw every day. You can interpret day. that question okay. however you like. I think tell her to keep drawing every day. It's really important. Um, and she should be learning how to use digital programs. I think just because digital lit literacy is important. Um, but also, like, it depends on what she's leaning into. She should really try everything, try all mediums. I mean, when I was in high school, I was doing detailed black and white drawings, which is exactly not what I'm doing right, now. <laughs> yeah, right. so, like, she has to experiment with everything, and then she'll find what she's really good at and loves, so... Yeah, encourage her to try everything, whether it's ceramics and woodwork and teach her to use the power tools. Go now, that it. is yeah. definitely Kofa coming out. Yeah. <laughs> you do everything when you're at when Try you're at everything, Kofa. yeah. Um, that's, that's super My university definitely encouraged that, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and Sarah was asking, do you think that consistency help with, helps with gaining a social media following? 100%, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just branding. Um, my other degree was media, so I did PR and advertising, which it definitely ties into, like, my marketing of my work and advertising. It. Um, mm. But, yeah, you should be consistent, but also don't let that limit you. Because my work, like, people think it's really consistent, but it's actually evolved a lot since I started. Right. Um, and from the outside, that's hard to tell, but for me, I know that my work is very different from when I started. Mm. Um, and it often takes a while for my audience to catch up. Like, I'll start doing something new and people will be like, what is this, and not really like it because they're not really sure and that's not what they're used to expecting from me. Mm. Um, but don't be discouraged by that. Like, stick to your guns. If you like what you're creating, then they will catch up and your audience will like it too eventually. <laughs> that's cool. I like it. Great yeah. advice. Um, Annalise was asking, do you enjoy the business side of things? Um, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I, I enjoy being like a professional young woman making my own way in the business world yeah. and yeah but there are some things that are really frustrating um I definitely prefer to, if I could just draw all day and not be bothered by anyone that'd be great but right right <laughs> like if money just came in somehow that'd be great. and you could just draw and travel and yeah be 100% yeah awesome. yeah it's not too many artists and creatives that tend to like the business side of things yeah. as well, I've found and over time. It's like time, a necessary thing to It is with. necessary. And yeah. like the artists who go far really do yeah. take that side seriously. And mm. like I think a lot of people are like, oh, it sucks because nowadays as artists we have to be business people. It's like we always have to be business people. Like right. Michelangelo 
Leonardo da Vinci, they're just really great at networking. And right, yeah. <laughs> they knew all the rich dudes. Like, that's it. It's always been that way. Um, mm. So you have to get yourself out there and you have to be a young businessman or woman or anyone, person. Any person out <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Do your thing. It's really great. Um, Jessica was thanking for the eyedropper tool. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, I cool. literally discovered that very late. <laughs> <laughs> so good. There's always something new to discover. Um, um, maybe the last question, then we'll, we'll get back into it. But... Um, Georgie, Georgina was asking, um, do you feel like there's many differences between uh, Adobe Draw and Illustrator and do you have a preference? Um, yeah, I guess Adobe Draw is really focused on the drawing part, whereas Adobe Illustrator, that's like a full-fledged program. You can do so much with it. That's how I create like my repeat patterns and do the really advanced stuff. Um, so I prefer Adobe Draw just for the simplicity and being on the go, but there are some things that I still have to go to a desktop and use Illustrator for, and it's mm. a magical, powerful program. So, yeah, it's great. <laughs> T- tools are literally like tools, right? Like yeah. you're just the right tool for the job. Mm-hmm. You, you don't always need to have like this big, giant power tool when you just need to put together some IKEA furniture. Exactly, exactly. And then vice versa sometimes, yeah, you're not going to... You really can't get, any, yeah. get anything done if you've got like... Mm-hmm. A like thing. me creating this artwork behind us would have taken so much longer if I was just doing it on the iPad right. and Adobe Draw, but because I did like the arrangement and made it a seamless pattern on Illustrator. It went so far. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool. Um, let's get let's get back to it. Okay. I know there's some more questions there, guys, but we'll do that. We'll just jump into them at the end just so we can continue yep. um, doing the artwork. But please keep them coming. We'll get to them when we can. 100%. So now I'm looking at my artwork. Okay, I'm definitely realizing that the weight of the black should have been a little bit strong, a little bit thicker or oh, something. I'm not entirely happy with it but i'm not going to change it now it doesn't matter um this is just my really like picky if there wasn't a time out. limit though we would i would 100 percent be yeah. here redoing the entire <laughs> artwork but um i'm looking at the overall um i like that there's green in the lake because it kind of brings your eye across from the grass on the left um the red sky is a bit strong but i like that there's another red sky in there And yeah, I just really look at the overall picture and decide, is it balanced? And does your eye travel across the page? Um, I'm going to do some little white stars because I just feel like that red needs to be broken up a little bit. Um, So I'm just doing that, which I just think will help. Um, And yeah, from there, um, if I'm happy with it, which I'm usually not, so I'll go back and and do more stuff, but uh, I'll just export it. I'll just save it or I'll open it in desktop app. Um, Sometimes I'll open it on Illustrator on my computer just to like rearrange things really quickly because Mm -hmm. if I want to rearrange, like if I want to grab this artwork and move it across, it's kind of difficult on the iPad because like it's part of one whole layer. So I have to like separate it from its layer. Right. It just becomes annoying. So if, yeah. If I wanted to move that across slightly, I'd probably just open it on Illustrator mm. <laughs> and do it that way. But this one I'm pretty happy with. So I'd just save it, uh, share it as an image, um, and maybe post it on Instagram. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And obviously because it's, it's a vector, you just save it. And then if someone says, oh, I'd love that, can you make a maybe series of artworks for your store or something like that? Or exactly. You can just reuse exactly. everything. Yeah. I usually save the I, – I keep all the vector artworks because – I just never know where it's going to go later. Mm. And it, there's nothing worse than find, like a client wanting an artwork and then I only have it as like a PNG and I can't really do much with it. So, yeah, yeah like just have all your vectors ready. Um, and where do you save everything? Do you just save everything to the cloud or? Um, yeah, I, or? I save, I have like a backup what is it, hard drive. Yeah, yeah, I have a little hard drive. But I also use Dropbox for like everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have, drive yeah, for yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think everyone has the preferred cloud, but Dropbox is my life. Yeah, I think it's whatever you whatever you started using, you just never change because yeah. it's all there. <laughs> exactly. You're like, oh, I don't want to mess with this system. It's just too hard to. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. And then, yeah, so that's how I end up with my final artworks using just two apps. <laughs> two apps, yeah. and sometimes capture to get sometimes your sometimes capture. Yep, yep. To get your photos. That's awesome. Well, maybe yeah. we can answer some of these questions. This is really cool. Um, so yeah, we've got five minutes left, you guys. So oh my if you god! Do have any more how co- is oh, no, it? It's just <laughs> Super I was like, fast. we have like 40 minutes. Yeah. It's fine. No, we just had so many questions, and there's so much to talk to you about. Um, mm-hmm. It's very interesting the way that you work, um, particularly the color. Yeah. Um, you're the first artist I think I've ever spoken to that's gone color first in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's not that's that's not normal and I love it. I, I think it I think it's amazing. Thank you. It's very clever. I think <laughs> I there might be colors. some illustrators watching this thinking, oh, I might actually try that. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. seriously. It's a great way to sort of 
change your thinking. I have done artworks where I will do all the line work and then I'll go in with color and it's just, I don't, I usually find it, it doesn't work as well. Yeah. Like at least for me, because I'm, yeah, I'm trying to work with a really limited color palette. So you have too much detail, too many things to color in. It's just, yeah, I don't know. That's my process. Yeah. Well, I mean, your colors are phenomenal and what you're very well known for. So you're obviously yeah. doing something right. So thanks for sharing. <laughs> thanks for sharing your process. It's really wonderful. Um, so Daniela uh, was asking, um, how do you get the vector points to line up? What do you mean? So <laughs> is that within the, um, maybe that was when you were drawing, you were just doing that by hand. Yeah, yeah, I was just drawing. So it even though hand. you're drawing so, in vector, yeah, um, it's it's not the same as a point to point like in Adobe Illustrator on the desktop app. Mm. So maybe that's what you're talking I about. I'm not so. sure. If you want to clarify, go for it. Yeah. Um. So maybe that's what she's talking about. But you're actually drawing with the tool, but it's drawing in in vectors. Vector. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's a kind of different like that. I think Adobe Draw because it it looks like you're just drawing sort of raster images, but they're actually mm. vectors once you export them. Um. So if I was drawing it in Illustrator, then yeah, you. I'd be connecting up those points and but yeah I don't really know I haven't really thought about the technicals of it yeah yeah it works somehow so it yeah. works <laughs> uh, if you want to clarify we, we'll try and answer that one as well yeah um Ella was asking do you have to be a good drawer to be a graphic designer no um I was talking about this with you before mm. I honestly thought I couldn't draw anymore like because for the longest time I was drawing things and then just fixing them up on Adobe Illustrator and yeah. so I thought that I was just good at making things look better rather than just drawing straight off like I would just draw a flower and that would fix it and make it look better. Um, yeah, so I got away with thinking I couldn't really draw for a long time. Which is um, crazy. Like, if I, anyone's out there thinking that they can't draw, like. <laughs> I thought I couldn't draw, yeah. <laughs> That's insane. And then I got the yeah. tablet and I, you know, you're forced to kind of actually draw things well the mm. first couple of times. And yeah, I got those skills back. Like, it's just mu muscle memory and yeah. confidence as well. So, yeah, yeah, I don't think you have to be able to draw, but you have to have a good eye. and. I don't know, taste. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll throw that in as well because my whole world is graphic design. Mm. No, the answer is no, you definitely don't have to be a good drawer. <laughs> I've never been able to draw and I faked it as a graphic designer for many, many years. Yes. And I've see. got lots of friends that can't, have never been able to draw. Um, it's not a required skill. It's a great skill to have um, and you should be confident with your drawing and sketching mm -hmm. and things like that. But to be a graphic designer, nope. Nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Um, so just get involved and don't be shy. Um, so Deb was asking, what file types do you save your images as? Um, I think she means if PNG, so 8 or 24. I don't, you probably don't have the choice. Do you have the choice I in here? I don't have the choice I in imagine here. it would default to 24. Um, it's probably a little bit more technical. I would always save as 24, and I only I really save... save as... I'm just answering the question. Yeah, for yeah you, thank so. you. No, yeah, usually 24, but I, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think you have the option on iPads. So I haven't really thought about it for a long time, yeah. Um, yeah, the only reason I would usually save is PNGs if it's like anything with a transparency or a logo mm. that someone requested. Um, I usually save it PNGs just because I Instead don't know. of JPEGs. Yeah, JPEGs yeah. untrustworthy. I, just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, yeah. Well, they do depreciate, so yeah. every as soon as you save it, it's like um, someone um, mentioned JPEGs are like a used car. As soon as you drive it off the lot, uh, they're not worth it. That's it, <laughs> that's it. Good? PNGs all the way. <laughs> there you go. Um, so Daniela actually meant so closing up, closing up oh, a yeah. shape. Closing up the shape. So I think like how you're finishing off the tulips there or the, oh, the, the yeah. fancy weeds. The fancy weeds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were joking that these flowers that I spotted in Austria are probably weeds, but they're still beautiful even if they are weeds. Mm. So interpret that as you will. Um, yeah. yeah, no, on Adobe Draw, I think it, cl it must close up the shape automatically or something, but yeah. on Illustrator, I don't think I can really show it without being on Illustrator. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I usually, yeah, I can't really explain it, but... Yeah. It just yeah. So I think up. in here it's quite intuitive. So once it closes the shape, it, it recognizes that it's a shape. Yeah. So when you filled it in, it knows not to spill out. Mm -hmm. And then you knew it was right, so you moved on to the next shape. And usually when I'm coloring artworks on uh, Adobe Illustrator, I turn it into a live paint object, which is the best way to color it in, I think. And that usually closes up the objects mm. quite well. Um, we and might I feel have, like We this... might have to have you back on to do it. I know. To do an I'm Illustrator sorry, one. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Dingo. It's been great. Thank you guys for the questions. Yeah, the um, questions were really good. That's thank you. Really nice. Yeah, it's been really, really great. And thank you so much for sharing your process. Um, we usually ask for like a little bit of parting advice. Like we haven't been asking you for advice this entire time. <laughs> I've got all the advice. Um, yeah, the one thing I usually tell people is to just be really creative with what your career looks like because um, like we're creatives and we're creative with what we make, but our careers, we're often like, nope, this is the path. I'm going to be an in-house designer or I'm going to be a graphic designer, but don't limit yourself. 
I didn't think I could be a GIF maker or a sticker maker. I didn't even think I could be an illustrator. So really just creativity is endless. We're really lucky to have creative skills. Um, and just, yeah, be creative with what your career looks like. You guys, that is such good advice. Um, <laughs> that is amazing. And that does take us to the end. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. Thank you so much for the questions. Um, if you're new and you haven't subscribed yet, we actually have a button. We actually have three buttons uh, on the all website, the <laughs> all the buttons, um, to subscribe. Um, and that's a separate little subscription thing just for us to let you know every time we go live. We'll just send you a little notification um, so that you never miss another Adobe APAC Live. This is our last one for 2018. We'll be back in January 2019. Thank you for being here and thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs>